Today News Update. It's the weekend and time for your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, June 10. A warm welcome to you. Prime Minister Mia Motley today challenged the countries of the Americas to build joint platforms for procurement to reduce the price of critical goods for the people of the hemisphere. As she addressed the ninth summit of the Americas today, Motley noted this is a critical move for small states in light of global supply chain difficulties. It's wrong that Cuba and Venezuela Nicaragua are not here because, as you heard from Bahamas, that we need to speak with those with whom we disagree. And we don't only need to narrow cast. That's the part of the problem of the world. There's too much narrow casting instead of broadcasting. There's too much talking at instead of talking with. But secondly, those countries must equally recognize that you cannot want to fully participate if you're not prepared equally to engage and to see progress and the simple priority must be people, not ideology. If we can make progress for people, if we can allow people to speak different languages, if we can create a minimum floor of education and health care for the people of the Americas, then my friends, the City of Angels would have played its role in the history of the Americas. Before she ended her speech, the Prime Minister added her voice to concern about the exclusion of Cuba, Venezuela and Nicaragua from the meeting. Stressing the need for dialogue, she made clear it should not have happened. And why? In the Caribbean we make an order and they say, what? That's too small for us. We announced a tax holiday for electric vehicles. We cannot get the supply of electric vehicles. Will Brazil help us? Will India help us? Will the United States or will Canada help us? We can't get access to batteries in order to help us become net zero by 2030. But yet we want to come on these platforms and talk about it. These are the real problems that I hope PAC 2030 will allow us to solve. And when we finish with PAC 2030, Canada and Chile and all of the others, can we create that platform for that joint procurement to reduce the price of supplies and to guarantee access to our people? In other news this Friday, President Dame Sandra Mason is anxious to see Barbados build out deeper connections with Kenya. She shared this view with President Kenyatta during a five-day official visit to the African country. The two officials discussed air links between the two countries and cooperation in several areas, including trade, culture, and people exchange initiatives. Both presidents agreed it was well past time for the African diaspora to be closely connected. Major infrastructure works are set to begin on several of Barbados' roads from next week. Today, Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Transport and Works and Water Resources, Cynthia Bradshaw, identified the roads earmarked for rehabilitation under the $43 million Into American Development Bank project. Under the Road Rehabilitation and Improving Connectivity of Road Infrastructure project, the Ministry has contracted C.O. Williams Construction Limited to execute work on Carmichael Road, St. George, from the Boarded Hall roundabout to Turnpike intersection with Highway 4 and Hottersville, St. Michael, from the Clyde Walker roundabout to the Lears roundabout. Minister Bradshaw said during a technical tour and site visit of the projects that the main objective is the quality of Barbados's roads. We accept that there will be disruption, but right now I think that we are proud to say to the public that we are actually starting the first phase of the project, this, this phase of the project to be able to bring improvement to road infrastructure across one of these. So disruption is going to be inevitable, um, but I think we can look forward to in the next couple of months being able to post a better road conditions across one of these. So this is just the start of the Minister of Physical Planning and Infrastructural Development in the Turks and Caicos Island, Akira Misik, who was here for the International Road Federation Regional Conference, described the event as an important learning experience. And our experience from a Turks and Caicos standpoint has been absolutely amazing. We've had an opportunity to learn best practices here from our colleagues here in Barbados. We've learned about resilience in the island of Dominica and building sustainability and resilience into our roadway networks. And we've also learned about the opportunities of introducing new technology, faster technology, automotive technology from our colleagues from California. And so it's given us a great opportunity to take back the information, 
not only on how to strengthen our public works ministry, but also on to ensure that we build safer roads for our road users in the Turks and Caicos Islands. And then next year when we have the 11th conference in the Bahamas, take the opportunity to show how we put what we've learned into practice. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Pure oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over 1 billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge. From strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news in Jamaica, there's strong reaction to calls from one government minister for the government to meet with feuding gangs to help arrest the country's crime problems. More on this report from Television Jamaica. Concerns about the number of people murdered in Jamaica each year. The government is in a race against time to deal with the crime problem. It's the reason the Minister of State with responsibility for the OPM's Western Jamaica office, Homer Davis, proposed that the police invite gang leaders to a sit-down as part of efforts to tame the crime monster. The proposal has since been met with strong criticism, both from the police and Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang. Now, opposition spokesman on National Security, Peter Bunting, believes the government is losing the fight against crime. Uh, government through the policy leadership cannot be seen in any way to be legitimizing criminal, dons or organized crime leadership by calling them in for some sort of um, appeasement meeting. Mm -hmm. That is sending the wrong signals to the society and to the community. But Justice Minister Delroy Chuck believes there is some merit to the proposal. As far as I can see, if within communities, the political directorate can work with the pastors, to work with the police, to see if they can bring these sighted gangs to the table to explain their differences, to try to sort out their problems, then there's no doubt in my mind that it is possible. On the international front, a deadlock on grain exports from Ukrainian ports is threatening a global food crisis. Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford reports from Kiev. Another truck arrives at this farm in the Kiev region of northern Ukraine. The rush is on to empty these silos of last year's harvest of maize to make space for approximately 35,000 tons of winter wheat. But much of this crop may go to waste because of what Ukraine and many countries it exports to say is a Russian sea blockade. At least 20 million tons of grain is already stuck in silos across the country, contributing to rising prices and what the UN says is a growing global food crisis. So this maize is being moved out of the silos in order to make space for the winter wheat harvest that is expected to start in about a month from now. A lot of this maize is being taken to silos elsewhere, but a lot of it will begin its journey to a port in Romania. A journey that can take up to three months and is very complicated indeed. One route takes the grain by train from Kiev into Moldova to avoid a coastal road that Ukraine says Russian forces have shelled. The train then drops back into the Odessa region of Ukraine before being unloaded at the Romanian border onto barges in Rene and Ismail. It then heads down the river Danube to the Romanian Black Sea port of Constanta. Analysts say shortages and long overland export routes have pushed the consumer price of grain up in recent months. Producers have been hit even harder. The cost of transport and logistics has increased 300% since before the war started. We are also looking at ways of getting the grain out via the Baltic Sea and through Hungary, but it can also take up to two months. 
That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on our Zooming Medium bus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe and join us again on Monday.